The presidents and leaders of the world all like to fly in style with their own planes worth hundreds of millions, if not billions. As far as the most infamous leader in the world right now, Russian President Vladimir Putin flies around in style. The man has got his own Illusion IL-96-300. This ended up costing a comparatively reasonable, by standards of other world leaders, sum of $500 million. This plane has all sorts of special amenities, including an office space, a gym, and one particular Putin favorite, golden toilet seats that are actual solid gold. That one amenity by itself could be worth as much as $30,000. This plane has a higher level of design, sophistication, and style than most planes of this nature. That's because the plush interiors were designed by the well-renowned interior designer and genius Ivan Glazunov. While you might be surprised by Putin's ride, considering the recent revelations that he might just be the richest man in the world in secret who chooses to live like a king in his private life. Trust me, he does not disappoint. It's been rumored that often when Putin flies, he does so with several identical aircraft so that no one knows which one he's flying in. He does have the largest fleet in the world with 68 planes that we know about. Even the pilot and the crew are supposedly unaware if the president will be aboard until they take off. Knowing Putin, even that could be a ruse. He's exactly the sort of guy who'd have a double who takes his place on flights just to cover his tracks even more. The man was in the KGB for 16 years. He's also got what he calls his Doomsday Plane. That's his modified Illusion IL-80 that has been designed specifically to survive nuclear Armageddon, a project that was rumored to cost an estimated $223 billion. The plane even has a special communication center that is capable of getting out a reliable signal no matter what devastation is going on around it. That's the weird little dolphin hump on top. Even if the entire world goes full Mad Max, Putin will still be in the air leading Russia, probably with golden toilet seats. While this is clearly the president's in case of apocalyptic emergency flight, it's been made clear that's not its primary function. Strangely enough, for an aircraft nicknamed the Doomsday Plane, it is actually intended to be something of a hype machine. So far, it's only ever been used as a piece of flying propaganda intended to show off Russia's strength to its citizens. You'd think it would have the opposite effect, but you'd be wrong. People just go nuts for this thing. When it appeared during the country's World War II victory parade, it was like they were at a concert and the doomsday plane was President Putin's stairway to heaven. The Saudi Arabian royal family has one of the most impressive planes in the entire world. That would be the Airbus A380, which is worth a big time budget of $502 million. This is the plane that famously features its own golden throne in the middle of the aircraft. This was designed with only one thing in mind, to create a flying palace that shows the family's decadent wealth in every single inch. Mission accomplished. For instance, even among enormous private planes like this, it's rare to see literal spiraling staircases that carry you from room to room. You find them in the grand entrance hall, which looks like the kind of place where horns are played to announce your entrance. The hall looks like the Apple Store of the future, with a bold white, almost marble white color scheme with gold accents. As you progress through this majestic flying wonderland, that white color gets replaced more and more by gold. This is highlighted the most in the aforementioned throne room, where the sweeping lights on the walls are clearly designed to draw your eyes to the throne. 
The private rooms go in a different aesthetic direction. They have this retro futuristic design that looks like what people in the 60s thought the future would be like. There's so much art, deco, and bold colors that it's surprising no one's swirling a martini at all times. This one has the most ridiculous amenities of any plane that travels with heads of state. It has stables for carrying the family's horses, its own concert hall that books AAA talent, a Turkish bath, luxury dining areas, incredible quarters for both crew and guests. It also has a rotating prayer room that faces Mecca no matter where in the world the plane is. I don't even know a good estimate on installing a room like this. Not only does the Saudi Arabian royal family have this luxury plane, but they also have one that has clocked the least amount of time in the air. They own a $300 million Boeing 747 jumbo jet that had to be retired despite the fact that it only has 42 hours of flight time. It is basically the opposite of their more famous jet, with nothing but open spaces featuring empty, chairless rooms. I guess they kind of forgot they owned this one. If you listen closely, I think you can hear the echoes of all that wasted money echoing through the aisles. Perhaps the most recognizable plane in the world is Air Force One. The current Air Force One was commissioned during Ronald Reagan's tenure for $660 million, though George H.W. Bush would be the one to ride around in it. Interestingly enough, the first President Bush's final flight was on Air Force One as well. The plane took his casket to his final resting place in Texas. The plane then served five presidents over three decades. This was, without a doubt, the most famous of the various Air Force Ones. Because of that, we know a lot more about it than any other presidential plane in service. First, this plane was designed for business. That includes the ability to essentially become an airborne oval office. It has a conference room, an oval office, and specific offices for the senior staff. It also has a mobile command center for the use of the president acting as commander-in-chief of the military with advanced encryption tech to make sure no one intercepts the highly secure communications. Then there's the specific area designated for the press, which looks very similar to a standard commercial flight, though not exactly coach. As far as entertainment goes, I assume they just have episodes of the West Wing playing on a loop. The plane features two fully equipped galleys. They have gigantic freezers that hold enough food to make over two thousand meals. The staff must be prepared to make food for as many as 100 people with very little notice. That includes a great deal of ice cream, a favorite among many presidents going all the way back to George Washington himself. I'm pretty sure you're not legally allowed to be president if you don't like ice cream. The plane also has a staff doctor who always travels with the president and a ton of medical equipment. That includes a fold-out operating table just in case of a need for emergency surgery. In fact, the entire medical area has been specifically equipped for a wide array of emergency operations. Then there's the special electronics in the plane. It has 85 telephones throughout the plane as well as several fax machines, radios, and more. In fact, the plane features more than 238 miles of wiring alone. For reference, that's more than twice that of a normal plane like this. The plane is also heavily shielded against an electromagnetic pulse, the kind you'd see during a nuclear explosion. It goes without saying, the whole thing is bulletproof and probably missile-proof as well. Then there's the iconic unfolding staircase that has been the subject of many, many presidential bloopers over the years. You'd think they just build the thing an escalator already. Fun fact, while people refer to the giant 747 with the iconic United States of America scrawled across its side, Air Force One is actually a call sign for any plane carrying the United States president. So if President Biden ever does a photo op on a crusty old crop duster worth a couple thousand bucks, that would be Air Force One. 
The Air Force One design goes way back. In fact, the first plane that could be described as Air Force One was one of the very first planes to ever hit the air. In 1910, Teddy Roosevelt actually made history as not only the first president to fly among the clouds, but one of the very first people, period. That's because he was riding around in one of the old-timey Wright Flyers built by the Wright Bros themselves. This was likely the cheapest plane ever to carry a president, even by today's money. Back in the day, it cost them less than $1,000 to build one of these. That probably saved them a lot of money considering the fact that they failed seven times to bring one of their inventions into the air. Even by today's cash, that's around 28 grand. It was a lot cheaper to build planes when they were made of wood and didn't have to include a giant jet engine. The only thing that's surprising about learning this is that Teddy Roosevelt wasn't the guy piloting the plane. He's the exact sort of person who would decide to do that last minute. The first plane to feature the typical design was the VC-137C Sam 2600. It first took to the air with President John F. Kennedy. This plane was the one that resembled a commercial airliner and featured the now iconic blue swoop with the words United States of America above it and the presidential seal. It was designed by the one and only Raymond Lowy, the so-called father of industrial design, who worked closely with Kennedy to make its look perfect for one of the most famous presidents ever. Within the first year of its service, it actually carried Kennedy to Dallas, Texas, where his life would be ended. It then stayed in service from 1962 to 1992. Franklin Roosevelt was actually the first president to get an official aircraft. He flew through the air in a Douglas Dolphin amphibian. Back in those days, this aircraft cost around $31,500. Back then, they didn't actually use the name Air Force One. It actually went by the designation RD-2. Before you Google it, no, that's not where George Lucas got the name R2-D2. What's crazy is that before that, FDR actually flew around on a commercial aircraft. That's right, he basically rode first class on a Pan Am plane called the Dixie Clipper. During World War II, officials with the armed forces started getting concerned about the president riding around in a typical commercial airline. For security purposes, they decided to refit military aircraft for the job. Before the Dolphin was in use, they went with a C-87A VIP transport aircraft with the best head of state nickname yet. They were going to call this thing the Guess Where 2. Only this hastily built plane was deemed unfit for the president, which led them to RD-2. He then had to change yet again to a C-54 Skymaster that had to be outfitted with a special elevator to carry him since he recently lost the use of his legs. This one carried the nickname Sacred Cow, of all things, so clearly they needed a better code word. It wasn't until Eisenhower's Columbine 2 that the name Air Force One was used. And even that didn't quite feel right until he actually got a $4.3 million Boeing 707. In today's money, that's estimated to be over $35 million. Seeing as that was the plane that led it to its destined popularity, I'd say it was money well spent. Regardless of how popular or famous Air Force One is, the plane has been in dire need of an upgrade for quite some time. Though not everybody agrees on the $5.3 billion price tag necessary to actually replace the Flying White House. Pretty much everything about the new plane has become a controversy. While former President Trump once criticized the plane's unnecessarily large price tag, his plan for Air Force One was actually more expensive. Every feature of this plane, including the proposed red, white, and blue color scheme, has come under a microscope. So who knows what this plane is going to be like when it finally gets off the ground. Air Force One's iconic status really doesn't have much to do with its design, though. Some of it has to do with this plane having more press than literally any other plane ever has. Some of it is because it had its very own Harrison Ford movie. I guess Illusion IL-80 just isn't as good of a name for a blockbuster action movie. 
The Mexican president Enrique Peña Nieto made headlines for all the wrong reasons by flaunting one of the most expensive planes ever constructed. That would be his Boeing 787-8 Dreamliner. Publicly, the plane was supposed to cost $200 million, which was pretty expensive by itself. The rumor is that it cost well over $600 million. It may actually be the plane least suited for the job of presidential plane. The president's dream project was made into his own private paradise, but not exactly one for business. For instance, the plane can only carry around 80 people despite being a huge airliner. The interior looks more like a five-star hotel than it does a professional aircraft. It has plush furniture, a gorgeous private bathroom, and incredible luxury dining areas. The plane's decadence has proven to be too much for both the new president and the government. President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador said that he refused to use the giant waste of money and that he would sell it and funnel 100% of the proceeds back to the community. That has proven to be pretty hard to accomplish. That mostly has to do with the limited cabin space. Converting the plane to be a normal commercial vessel capable of carrying over 300 would likely cost millions making it in no way a worthwhile sale to anybody. Now the luxury liner is retired and open to the public to rent out for parties, weddings, and more for hundreds of dollars. Just enough to cover maintenance fees and not make a profit. I guess that's one way to give back to the community. Germany also has a pretty impressive aircraft. That would be their Airbus A340 313X VIP. It has a price tag of around $300 million. Like America, they have a nickname special to the country. They refer to their airliner as the Konrad Adenauer, named for the first chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. Honestly though, this name is nowhere near as catchy as its unofficial nickname. Back when Angela Merkel was the Chancellor of Germany, the plane was frequently referred to as Merkel Force One. Olaf Scholz just doesn't have the same ring to it, you know? The cool aspect of this aircraft is its versatility. It is set up to, if necessary, become what is essentially a giant hospital flying through the air. So some world leaders have doomsday planes, and some have the capability to become an episode of Grey's Anatomy in the air. French President Emmanuel Macron has a very, very French ride, which is called Cotam-1. On the one hand, this $270 billion Airbus A330-200 is all business. It's been designed to specifically be a professional vessel that is lighter on some of the other amenities. This one doesn't look like a flying hotel, that's for sure. There is one special feature that is very, very French indeed. It has included a private kitchen that prepares incredible five-star level meals. His favorite food is reported to be Cordon Bleu, one that I'm sure is ready to go any time this flight takes off. While heads of state take flying through the air for granted today, years ago presidents like Abraham Lincoln and George Washington were both fascinated by hot air balloon travel. Yeah, that's right, we came very close to having a Balloon Force One. 